Hello everyone, today we are going to learn how to better handle errors in TypeScript. In this video, we will look at the conventional way to handle errors in JavaScript and TypeScript, and then how we can make that better by using TypeScript. To get started, you can hop into any TypeScript project, and we're just going to create a mockdb.ts file. Inside of this file, we can create a new function called getUserTraditional, which will take in no parameters, and will return a promise of type user. In order for this to work, we need to create a new type called user, so we'll create a file called user.ts, and then we'll export a type of user, and it's going to just be a name of type string and an email of string. Then back in our db file, we're going to want to simulate an error being occurred, so we can just throw new error, and for the text we're going to say bad db error. Now to call this function, we can create a new function inside of index called main traditional, which is the conventional way to handle errors. So what you'd be doing is you'd be wrapping everything in a try and catch statement. Inside of the try block, you can do the action that would be causing the error. So in our case, we're getting the user and then we're going to log that user into the console. Then inside of the catch block, you can handle the error. So in our case, we're just going to simply log the error. If you run this code, it works, however, it has some major disadvantages. The first disadvantage is the lack of types. You really don't know what type E is, and you can add a type to E, but then you never know what could be changing, and you rely on documentation of the method instead of the actual code of the method to know what the type of error it returns. This lack of types also makes it more difficult when coding, as you rely on documentation instead of auto-completion of your editor when trying to find the error type fields. And it makes it more difficult to determine the type of the error. If your code could be throwing multiple different types of error, you have to manually go through and check every single type of error. Also, there's no way to force the user of your function to check if there's an error. However, with the power of TypeScript, we can fix these issues. The first thing we can do is create a new file called air.ts. Inside of air.ts, we can create our my air type. So we're going to export type my air, which is going to have a message of type string and a resolution of type string as well. Now, in order for us to make it easy to check the type of air messages, we're going to create an enum called air messages. And this is where we can list all the potential types of errors that could occur. So in our example, we could have a DB error where there's an error connecting to the DB. So inside of our error messages enum, we can create a no field DB error and set it to the string error occurred while dealing with the DB. We can go back to our my error type and we can set the type of message to be a string or error messages now. Here is a way for TypeScript to really come in handy because in order for this error type to work, we need to have a clear way to know if an error has been thrown. To do this, we can create a new function called isError, and it's going to take in a parameter of to be determined, which is of type any or my error. This function will return to be determined is my error, which what this means is the is keyword is telling TypeScript that if it's true, then that means to be determined is of type my error. And if it's false, then that means to be determined is not of type error, it's another different type. This will allow us to easily type check our error messages. This function will return a double exclamation mark and we're going to be say to be determined as my error and then we're going to say dot message this double exclamation mark means that whatever comes after it if it's null it will return false and if it's not null it will return true so in our case if the object being passed to it has a field of message that means that it is a my error and we're returning true. And by returning true, we are telling TypeScript that the type of the to be determined object is my error, as we're using the is keyword in our return statement. With that out of the way, we can now use this new error type in our code. So going back to our DB file, we can create a new function called get user. Get user also will take in no parameters, but it'll be returning a promise of user or my error. Inside the body of get user, we can just return a promise.resolve, and what we're going to do is we're going to pass in an object that has the same types as our my error, so message 
it, it's going to be air messages DB air and a resolution, which we can just say check DB air. You'll notice now when you're coding this that you'll get type inference with your IDE because by returning your my air object, your IDE can know what field must be included in your air message. Now, back in our index.ts file, we can use this new function. To do this, we can create a new async function called main. Main will first set user to the await of our get user function. You'll notice there's no need for try and catch statements. Then we can check if user is an error by saying if is error user. Inside of that if statement, the now user will have the types of the my error. So your IDE will be auto-completing the types for the my error type instead of the user type. So we can check if user.message is equal to the error messages.db error. And if so, we can handle that specific error case, which will just be console logging it. Otherwise, we can handle a general error in our log as well. Then outside of those if statements, we can say else. And that means now we're getting the types for user. And we can just log the user. And if you run this code, you'll see you're getting the message in the console return db error and then the db error object. So now you can see the benefits of using this custom error solution as now you are forced to check for an error because it is being returned by the function and you get easy type inferences of your errors by your IDE. Hopefully this tip will help you in your next TypeScript project. And if so, please like and subscribe as I will be posting more videos like this in the future. Thank you.